Hello and welcome back to a new Elden Ring build video. Today I'll be showing you how to make a very defensive tanking build, which mainly focuses on blocking with a shield, doing counter attacks and being able to absorb huge amounts of damage. So if you're sick and tired of being one-shotted by bosses and powerful enemies, and you want more of a purely defensive build, then maybe this playstyle will be good for you. As for the allocation of character points, you can see that I've mainly focused on putting them into Strength, Endurance and Vigor. So as a tanking damage sponge kind of character, obviously we need a lot of vigor, and I've decided that having around 1400 or 1500 HP is more than enough HP. Yes, I could have put more points into vigor and gone up to 2000 HP and have a massive health bar, but I really feel like it's not very necessary to have so much HP. Even with 1400 HP, you can survive quite a lot of attacks from a boss or a high level enemy and still survive. In order to get my HP up to 2000, I would have to sacrifice a lot of strength and a lot of damage dealing capability. And even though we're a tank here, we still need to be able to do some damage back to them. And having not many points in strength would just mean that fights go on forever. So I like to have strength at around 50, at least 50, nearly 60. And then I just put the rest into endurance so we can carry heavy gear and heavy weapons and also have a nice amount of stamina to play around with. As for the talismans, we're going for the curved sword talisman, which enhances guard counters, and great shield talisman, which boosts your guarding ability. Blue feathered branch sword is good. It raises defense when your HP is low. And it's actually pretty nice because when your HP is low, then it reduces incoming damage by about 30%, which can be quite a lifesaver. And finally, we have Dragon Crest Shield Talisman, which vastly boosts physical damage negation. Now, if you're going up against the boss or enemies that mainly focus on magic attacks, you can swap this out for the Spell Drake Talisman, which basically just boosts magical damage negation. And if you're going up against a fire enemy that does fire attacks, then you can choose the Flame Drake Talisman, which boosts fire damage negation. So really, it just depends what kind of enemy you're going up against. If you're really stuck on a boss, then you might want to pick and choose what kind of talisman goes best against them. As for the fighting style, we're going to be having our shield up most of the time with Barricade Shield activated. Barricade Shield is really good because you don't lose any stamina when you're blocking. So you could just block forever if you've got enough focus points so you can keep enabling the skill when it's run out. It's just a bit annoying because Barricade Shield doesn't really last very long and it's not really very obvious when it wears off. So up against multiple enemies, our defensive capabilities are quite impressive. We just have to make sure that Barricade Shield is up. However, we're not invincible and sometimes we can be unlucky and get hit from the side somehow. As you can see, we're taking quite a beating here and this is where the blue feathered branch sword talisman is quite useful because it reduces damage taken by about 30% when your HP is low. I'm pretty sure without that talisman I would have died just now. It also helps have a pretty big health bar because sometimes in Elden Ring you can be very unlucky in some cases and take a lot of damage when you weren't really expecting to. And it's times like this I'm glad I'm not playing a glass cannon kind of playstyle. You could switch out the sword for a bigger sword or maybe a spear or a pole arm or some kind of halberd. I quite like the colossal swords because they have quite a good range and a nice sweeping arc and they do massive damage when you do a counter attack. Even against really large enemies that do these really big wind up power attacks, you can block those as well and you do like a backwards roll but you won't take any damage. Or maybe you'll take just a tiny bit of damage but not much. It's really nice when you go up against these really big enemies and you don't really have to worry about rolling or dodging, you can just stand there with your shield up and take anything that they throw at you. But sometimes some enemies they do really powerful attacks that can't be blocked. For example this giant hand thing, it kept hitting me even when I had barricade shield up and I was trying to block, it still managed to damage nearly half of my health. And as for armor, I like the veteran's armor sets. Basically you want to choose your heaviest armor that gives you highest defense and highest amount of poise so you don't get knocked around when you're trying to attack too much. I got it from some boss, he's called Commander Niao. He's in Castle Soul on the rooftop. It took me quite a long time to defeat that boss, but when you do, you get his armor set. And I've also got this other armor set called Lionel's Armor. It's slightly better than Veteran's Armor when it comes to defensive capabilities. The problem is it looks really weird. It looks kind, of, looks kind of stupid. It makes you look really fat and chunky. So if you don't mind looking this way, then you could go for this as well. I found this armor set in the Lindell capital somewhere in a house. And yeah, it looks kind of weird. It's the weirdest armor set I've ever seen in the game so far. You can match it with a black shield to make it fit in a bit more maybe. 
As you can see, I've got quite a large variety of shields to choose from. Could also use the twin blade sword from Radan the boss, which matches the armor set quite well. Or you could use this colossal shield, which is absolutely ridiculous. So look at this thing. <laughs> it shoots fire out from the front. It's called Visage Shield. And the guard boost on this thing is insane. Even without barricade shield, the damage negation is absolutely amazing on this shield. It's really good. And the amount of stamina you lose from blocking, it's very small compared to what it would be if you used a smaller shield. I would say with this shield, you probably don't even need barricade shield ability. And you can use this flame attack, which is pretty cool, but you do run out of stamina really fast when you use it. And then you can just have the shield back up, do some counter attacking, and watch this guy step backwards off the edge. <laughs> great AI, great AI sometimes, it does make me laugh. The blocking capability of this visage shield is just insane. Look at this boss, Beast Clergyman, who does purely physical damage, and he's just relentless. He keeps spamming all of these combos. You barely get any window of opportunity to attack him back. And I don't even have barricade shield on, and I'm just blocking everything he throws at me, barely taking any stamina damage, and look at my stamina recharging whilst I have my shield up. I'm pretty much invincible against this kind of boss. It's, it's very amazing. And I tried fighting this boss before as more of a damage dealing, dodging kind of character. And I kept getting two shot killed all the time. But now that I have this tanking build and this shield and this armor, I'm finding this boss battle to be really easy. There's quite a lot of boss encounters in this game where it's just a lot easier to be a defensive tank and just block all of their attacks instead of trying to dodge out of the way, which I guess is more takes more skill. Unfortunately, the second phase for this boss is still pretty difficult because he does a lot of magical damage, and the shield and the blocking doesn't really do much against the magic damage. I guess when you come up against bosses like this that does huge magic damage, it really shows the flaws of this kind of tanking build. So I tried doing the boss again this time. I tried switching talismans before the second phase, well, as the second phase started to begin, which was pretty difficult and stressful. I switched to the magic negation talisman and i also tried to use the magic fortification incantation which was very risky the de equipping unequipping my shield during the fight to try and get the magical fortification spell on somehow i managed to survive and get the shield back on but at that point i had taken too much damage and i kind of ran out of potions and yeah the magical negation gear did reduce the damage a little bit. But this Maliketh boss, he just does way too much damage that gets through even your shield, which makes the whole blocking playstyle not to be very effective against this enemy. So yeah, as with everything in this game, there are pros and cons to certain playstyles and different kinds of builds. There's weaknesses and strengths that you can find in every aspect of the game, which is what makes it so fun to play in my opinion. So thanks for watching my tank build, hope it was nice, goodbye.